emerging markets may have been under fire this week, but more developed markets could well face the brunt of investor uh, worries next week. Nina and Sarah are here to look at the week ahead. Sarah, the FOMC minutes really have left financial markets still pretty disturbed. Yeah, investors are definitely speculating when the Fed will start tapering its asset purchases, and more and more people fear that it could happen as soon as September, and that just sent a wave of nervousness across the markets this week. We had uh, U.S. Treasury yields at two-year highs, and again, in turn, that spurs worries about the housing market, emerging markets are worried about this. So just like everyone is just really focused on this right now. Yeah, yeah as you mentioned, you know, the emerging markets really had a pretty much of a rough ride. Mm -hmm. But um, what exactly are we getting next week in terms of data, in terms of numbers, that will give us any more guidance to what's going to happen? We do have key points of U.S. data next week, like pending home sales, for instance, and also the U.S. GDP revision as well for the second quarter. Now, this week we had existing home sales, and they were particularly strong. However, some are concerned that the effects of rising rates haven't yet worked their way through to the market because people have been rushing in to buy. In, in other words, the rise in Treasury yields that Sarah was talking about will impact on mortgage rates, and that obviously will therefore will put feed a dampener through. onto the housing market. So while Fed minutes show that, that the officials aren't concerned just yet, that they think it will still, still remain resilient for a while, there is a bit of a downside risk to next week's numbers. Okay, fine. So let's move on to the Eurozone where we've had a little bit of talk this week about Greece probably needing a third bailout. Um, oh, but also the economic data has been relatively strong. It's actually been pretty good. Like as this week we had the PMIs that were much better than expected. German GDP just confirmed that the, the German economy is uh, on, on its way for recovery. And also the fact that it wasn't just exports that was doing it, it's actually consumer demand at home, which is pretty good. And next week we had unemployment, both from Germany and the Eurozone. And I think one of the key things here is to look at it. The Eurozone may be out of recession for now, but we still have unemployment stuck at a record high level. So for the expectations for next week, we'll probably see uh, the unemployment still at 12.1%, which is pretty high. Uh, for but the there Euro are hopes that it's stabilizing, which I think yeah. people are looking at that to say, well, at least there's some sort of... And we have, the FO, we have the FO index as well, which of course means that we're going to see some sort of measure here of business confidence, mm -hmm. you know, are the better is are the better numbers really helping things along? The ZW are particularly strong, so yeah, and it should actually help. We should see a pickup in the IFO next week. Okay. Well, slightly worrying, I think, though, is that French data seem to be peeling away again. They were both pretty strong for a while, but now both sort of engines of growth in the eurozone. But now France is sort of starting to stutter a bit. And, and you yeah, know, that is really uh, one one of the key things here. Is Germany going to have to do it on its own? But talking of you know engines of power, Japan. You know, is that actually showing any real signs of recovery? Well, there have been suggestions that Japan may have to launch another spending package in order to counter this proposed sales tax hike next year, because um, people are saying that that might derail the sort of nascent growth that we're seeing. For CPI data next week, we're expecting price indications to continue on the upward trend, and that, that albeit modestly. That's basically everybody's going to be worrying. Deflation, is it over? Is Japan finally back And we on also have industrial production figures as well, and recent import uh, export data has been slightly weak, so we're not expecting much from those numbers. Plus, we had a very big slump in the numbers last month. Okay, Sarah, we also have Mr. Carney, the new Bank of England governor, apparently performing next week. And he seems to be like, the favorite central rank man right now. <laughs> is Everyone's it, is it talking about him. Because he looks like a film star or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, one pe what some people say. But he also like brought in the central bank uh, in the UK into like basically international attention. A few weeks ago, they launched a the forward guidance, uh, and it didn't have the expected effect. The like, yields have been rising, sterling has been rising, so the markets aren't really taking it in as, as the bank probably hoped for. But next week, we have Mark Carney speaking for the first time since the inflation report. And there's a Q&A after this meeting. So we can expect a lot of questions about this. What are they going to do about forward guidance? Can we get some more details? Well, and UK I mean, GDP was I mean, also I mean, revised precisely. higher. So I mean, all of this is feeding into expectations for a rate hike sooner than what they're guiding. And, and exactly. And, you know, his guidance is you know, for things to remain as they are for, if anything. All he um, can do is try and talk rates down. But whether people listen will be another thing. Well, just to see how, he, how much he can talk. And he probably can't <laughs> say much. But he doesn't really have a mandate to say anything that hasn't already, already been, been out said. there. Absolutely. I mean, that, 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 that's really important. Well, finally, the corporates, Dino, what can we expect? Next week, Antifagasta and also G4S. That's, that's the mining company, right? Antifagasta, yes. And they're both FTSE 100 listed as well, so relatively yeah. prominent. Um, Antifagasta had a weak first quarter owing to falling copper and weak gold prices as well, and that's expected to feed through into the second quarter and over the first half as a whole. But copper prices have been recovering slightly, actually, over the last month because of uh, growth that we're seeing in the Eurozone and also a pickup in China. So it's, it's very, very much hinged on how how copper prices go 
from here and also how, how the China recovery story plays out. Now with G4S they have to kind of prove to their investors and the market as a whole that they are back on track despite the various setbacks that they've had like the Olympics for instance, Absolutely. everybody knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> and also they've recently pulled out from a bidding process for the UK uh, electronic tagging contract. So near term, that, that's when you wear something around your ankle so the police could keep a track of you, right? To make sure they're not breaking your conditions okay, and that fine. kind of thing, okay. exactly. So near term, few concerns in place, but overall it looks like uh, things might, might improve for G4S if, if the recovery in, in Asia continues to take hold. Fascinating week ahead. Sarah and Nina, both thank you very much.